everybody, Tim and Julie here for the last Burton anthology movie, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. Um, the last of the 90s movies. Um, we did Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and now the fourth and final one, uh, Batman and Robin. I call it like the Tim Burton movies because they all yeah. kind of have that feel. But technically he did the first two and then Joel Schumacher did the second two. Um, so like I said, this is, uh, 1997, the sequel to Batman Forever. Um, the first thing I'll do, I'll get it out of the way, is ask, so we've seen Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, and now George Clooney. Who is your favorite? Mm -hmm. I would say Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer? Okay. That's a good one. Um, for me, I think it actually kind of goes in that order. Like, I really like Michael Keaton. Phil Kilmer is really good, though. Yeah. Like, him and him and Michael Keaton are pretty tied. And then George Clooney's, like, way, way, in, way in third. Um, so this movie was rough for me. Um, <clears throat> like I said, so we're kind of going a little bit out of order. Oh, the way, if we had done this, like, the way it aired... It was the first movie, the second movie, the animated series, the third movie, and then the fourth movie. So this movie, no, let me back up. The animated series redefined Mr. Freeze. Okay. So when Mr. Freeze was first created, he was just a villain that froze people. That was it. And then when the animated series came out, they came out like... The, the animated series redefined Batman completely, 100%. So I'm super excited for you to watch that. Um, they created Harley Quinn. That's where she originated from was the animated series. And Mr. Freeze, they completely made up their own origin story. And it was all about his wife that was sick. And he he was less of a villain and more of like an anti-hero. Like, he wasn't trying to steal just to steal stuff. He was trying to steal stuff to save his, his wife. Right. And realistically speaking, like, if Jordan suddenly got, like, this deadly disease and they were like, you need $1 million to cure him, there is not a bank in America that would be safe. Right. Done. Absolutely. Life of crime. No fucks given. I'm getting the money. Mm -hmm. um, as somebody who's been married i'm assuming like yes. the same thing like yeah. and that that's what makes and you'll i mean it's a little bit of a spoiler but you'll as you'll see that's what makes mr freeze actually a very likable character well towards the end yeah it was, he was pretty good i mean and and this movie like this movie is like i said we're, we're going out of order in the in the series you you get multiple episodes of that uh -huh. whereas this movie you're trying to cram that entire storyline in like two hours yeah. so i mean this is <laughs> this is the tip of the iceberg <laughs> um it, it's it's right there but like the animated series does so well where he's like i'm sorry but like if i have to kill you to save my spouse I'm, I'm choosing my spouse over you right and i mean like jordan and i have only been married for nine years like a hundred percent like i'm it, it, it sucks to say but like random stranger number a or jordan like i know who i'm picking Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Yeah, family should come first. So, and it it re like I said, it redefined who Mister Freeze was compared to like we've seen him a little bit in the '66 TV show. Mm -hmm. He's just a random villain that likes to freeze people. Right. So it gives him some depth. Mm -hmm. But wasn't there another character that we saw that was doing doing it to save somebody or in or, uh, where? In the bat in sixty six, it was. I thought there was, um, thought there was one that, that we th thought was, yeah, he was bad, but he was helping somebody. Help was, it, was it the Robin Hood character? Maybe? It might have been. I don't. Know. I think it might have been maybe. Robin Hood. Or maybe it was Egghead. One of the two. But it was a minor one. It wasn't yeah, a big it one. wasn't a big character. Um, no. But yeah, so so the animated series redefined Mr. Freeze was a big character, so they completely redefined him. And this is a, a plot line. What what I love about the animated series, like I'm even I don't know if you guys can tell, I'm even wearing like like my Funko Pop animated series Batman shirt. I'm so excited. Um, is so many things that they redefined have changed Batman history. 
like I said, Harley Quinn started in this in the animated series. She went to be in the comics, and now she's in live action movies. This Mister Freeze storyline started in the animated series. It I don't remember if this movie came out or not, um, but it it it's obviously in this movie and in the comics. Nora Freeze becomes this major character that Mister Freeze is just trying to save her life. So I absolutely love that. Now all of that being aside, just five minutes of talking about nothing uh for the actual movie <laughs> whew, this movie was rough uh for me um it's to me it's more of a cartoon than the animated series like so many scenes like batman like ice skating down the dinosaur snowboarding in the air stuff like that um lots of scenes the the first scene where they're fighting mr freeze uh -huh. the very first one um it's very overhead shot, and it reminded me of the 60s. Because mm -hmm. anytime, like, Adam West does a fight or something, it's it's pretty much just right. filmed above. So it reminded me of that. Um, so like you said, a uh, lot of actors in this one. Uh, I'll go through them real quick, because I'm just, I'm talking nonstop. I'm so excited. Um, George Clooney. Right. Chris O'Donnell, who was in Batman Forever. Mm -hmm. um, Alicia Silverstone. Yes. Is in this. Uh Already had done Clueless, famous Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, uh, Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy. Um, let's see who else is in there. Um, is that it? Um, oh, um, a very small cameo of John Glover plays like Uma Thurman's boss, the guy that kills her in the beginning of the movie. Oh, okay. He hadn't done a whole lot at that point. Like he was famous. He had actually been the voice of the Riddler in the animated series. So when we get to his episodes, it's kind of funny. Um, after this, he went on to be in Smallville. He played Lex Luthor's dad. He's been in a ton of stuff now. So it was great to see him. Uh, Vivica A. Fox has a short cameo in this yeah. where she's the one that's like hitting on Mr. Freeze. and Which is funny because then after this... Vivica A. Fox and Uma Thurman are both in Kill Bill. So it's, they, they sure know scenes in this, but they're, they're later on. Um, that's enough of me talking. I want to take a break and I want to drink my drink. Um, what did you think of the movie? Go ahead. Take, take it for a while. Uh, it was okay. I liked it. There was a lot of action. Um, I didn't care for Arnold Schwarzenegger as wrote Mr. Freeze, but oh well. Um, now see me growing up in the 90s I love Arnold <laughs> like it doesn't matter if it's like kindergarten cop well, or he, like predator his early stuff yeah that was okay but him as Mr. Freeze I just didn't care for him okay. but yeah um, like I said there was a lot of action you know uh, Batman and um, Robin having to be saved and him getting upset and then like you don't care for me, mm. you don't want me. Oh, with the love potion. You know, and then um, when he was, I think, writing to uh, Alfred about, you know, Batman, uh, not Batman, Bruce Wayne not liking him, and he just gonna go and leave, <laughs> and, you know, and that's, I don't know, to me, that's probably how I would have felt, you know, if, you know, you're there trying to help somebody, but then they don't appreciate you or they think that you don't care for them, you mm. know, what, even though you do. Um, but by the end, they got over it, you know, and they, I don't know, it was then when Bruce, uh, Alfred's niece, Mm -hmm. Barbara. Barbara, when she showed up, you know, and was there to help him, mm -hmm. you know, that was, that was sweet, you know, because I, if my grandfather was, or still alive, I'd probably be there like that too, okay. wanting to help, because I'm just that type of person. I like to help family, mm. friends, <laughs> any, you know, anybody that, that I can help. You know, it's so, it's going to be. I'm going to take a quick side side street just because you, you triggered me. We should have <laughs> we should have had a trigger warning, um, just to make me a little bit bitter. Mm -hmm. That I I want to tear up a little bit. Um, 
I try to be that person. Like I really try to like help people and I think that I do, but at the same like flip, I'm one of those like, I'm more willing to help friends than I am family though. Mm -hmm. Only because my grandparents were in very, very poor health when I first met Jordan. And my grandfather was a, a Southern Baptist minister. And literally on their deathbed, they were like, you can come see us, but you can't bring Jordan. If you bring Jordan, then you're not allowed to come in the room. And I did not go in the room. I said no. Because... Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, and I had a choice. It was my choice. And I was like, I can either pick my grandparents and the bigotry, or I could pick the person who I've, I, I mean, at that time it hadn't been that long. It'd been like mm -hmm. a year or so, but I was like, or I could pick the person who is choosing me for me. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like I'm kind of torn in the middle where I was like, I, I, to I would have been there in a heartbeat. Like right. I would have gone to see them. But they chose to not see me. Mm -hmm. And then when they did pass, I wasn't invited to the funeral. I wasn't invited to anything. I don't even know if they had a will. They could have left me something. Mm -hmm. Was never granted access to it. Um, so, that being said, a little bitter. But, well, well, I'm so, kind of that way with my siblings. You know, my brother I hadn't seen in 35 years. Lived close. Messing, you know, friended him on Facebook and all that, and got a phone call from him, you know, thinking oh, my husband, he was going to say, hi, sis, haven't seen you in a while, how, how are you doing? No. First words out of his mouth, uh, could you loan me a couple hundred dollars? <laughs> and I messaged him back and told him, hey, I'm not your bank. Yeah. You know, and s sad that he passed away this, this last Thanksgiving, but... Oh, well, he chose that life. Yeah. And then my sister, too, yeah. you know. She's acting like my mother. You know, who are you with? Why are you going? <laughs> you know, when we went on our, our road trip. trip yeah. You know, I don't need those kind of people in my life, yeah. you know. See, that's that's what I like about like this, where it's like mm -hmm. you, you, you need to find the people who will support you for you. Right. Uh, and that's what we kind of see with, with Barbara, where she's like, no, I'm going to rescue him. And then she's she realizes, like, okay, this is actually a family. Right. And she joins it. You need that support group. Right. I mean, out of this whole group, like, technically none of them are related, but right. they have each other. They have so each other. That's, that's why we got each other. Yes. Um, My two biggest complaints about this movie... That is just me being technical. Like, so we saw it in the first... I've, I've mentioned it in every review. Uh, we saw it in the first movie where they changed Batman's origin because it's supposed to be Joe Chill, but instead they changed it to the Joker that killed Bruce's parents. Mm -hmm. We saw it in Batman Forever where um, I think it was Tony Zuko that killed Robin's parents. But instead... Or maybe it was Guy Zio. Anyways, um, it, was, it was a mobster that killed his parents. They changed it to Two Face. In this one, Barbara Barbara Batgirl is supposed to be Barbara Gordon. She's right. supposed to be Commissioner Gordon's daughter. She was in the third season of Batman sixty six. She is in the animated. She, she's literally Barbara Gordon in every fucking Batman thing ever made, except for this movie. Supposedly they didn't do it because Pat Hingle, the the actor who plays. Commissioner Gordon was like too old and mm -hmm. it wouldn't have looked right. I'm just saying, Commissioner Gordon in Batman, the TV show, is no spring chicken. No. But they made it work. So, whatever. Yeah. That being said, that bugs the shit out of me. Can't, I just, like, every time I try to get over it, I can't get over it. The second thing, again, we're watching it out of order, so you'll. This might annoy you later on. I feel like we're going to watch the animated series or something. And then you're going to look back on this movie. And you're going to be like, that was a pile of shit. What was that? <laughs> um, Bane. In this movie, he is literally like Poison Ivy's henchman. He can't talk, really. He just mumbles words. He's just the strength. In the comics, in other movies, in the TV shows... Bane is actually a genius. Like, he is a strategic genius. 
that like figures out Batman, knows who like Bruce Wayne is Batman because he's that smart and like all sorts of other stuff. He's a great villain. They literally just reduced him to sidekick in this movie. Mm -hmm. Bugs the shit out of me. Don't like it. Um, so again, once we get to like Bane and like the animated series, you're going to be like, wait, is that, is that the same character? <laughs> um, so you'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, other than that, I mean, realistically, like I said, this whole movie, it just, <laughs> I don't mean this in a negative way there. This movie has gotten so much hate over the years, other than those two points, other than Bane and Barbara, this movie's actually not too bad. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's very, it's, it's like watching a live action cartoon. Yeah. Like it it's, was... it's literally like everything they do, every, like the way Poison Ivy talks, everything about it. And that's the other thing. Everybody always looks at this movie and hates on it looking at Batman today. And I'm like, uh, you gotta remember, this is the nineties for one. And they're basing it very, very much off of the sixties. Because even Arnold, like, the way he talks, the way he acts, it's campy. Like, it's dark and edgy like the 90s, mm -hmm. but it's very campy like the 60s. It's very, very cheesy. So the whole thing, this movie has more neon than most raves that I've been to. And let me tell you, I've been to a lot of raves. <laughs> like, we'll leave it at that. Lots of cage dancing. Lots of raves. I actually used to be very, very skinny. It was a great time in the early 2000s. Anyways, um, but like the bike races, stuff like that. I was just like, oh my God, like neon everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, that like, I don't know. Um, one of the things that gets me is the title. So the last movie was Batman Forever. This one is Batman and Robin. I feel like those should be switched. Yeah. The first movie should have been Batman and Robin, and then this one should have been Batman Forever. Right. Just because now there's Batgirl, so it just it didn't make sense to me. One of the little cameos or shout-outs that I liked is when Mr. Freeze is in prison and Bane is, like, breaking him out, you get to see the outfits of the Riddler and Two-Face in there. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's pretty awesome. Uh, the Robin signal, okay. Um, that's... a about all I got. Like I said, it's it's not a good movie. I I mean, you you like it, that's fine. Um it's it's not it's not a great movie. But it's it's better, I feel like most people give it credit for. Uh if you ever watch the commentary like on the DVD or Blu-ray, Joel Schumacher, the director, flat out apologizes. He's like, "I'm sorry for ever making this movie." Um George Clooney supposedly rumor has it like, if you ever approach George Clooney and were like, hey, I saw Batman and Robin in theaters, he will actually give you money, like, paying you back for your, your movie okay. ticket. Um, George Clooney has been on both sides. He has completely said that this movie's awful. But at the same time, at this point, all he had basically been famous for was ER. Mm -hmm. And he said, like, this movie launched me into being in big production movies so i mean he's kind of on both like he hates it but he's like i hate it but it got me noticed right. so whatever um chris o'donnell ncis alicia silverstone's done a lot of stuff um mm -hmm. but overall i don't know i'm kind i'm kind of par with it like i there's parts i absolutely hate and then there's parts that like I'm on the opposite side of Arnold Schwarzenegger that you are. Mm -hmm. Like, to me, like, do I like him as Mr. Freeze? No, I think he's terrible. But he's so terrible, I actually really like him. <laughs> Which, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. But, like, mm -hmm. the the pun... I Somebody somebody wrote it down. I think there's, like, 37 puns. There's an obscene amount of ice puns in this movie. Which, again, mm -hmm. like, any time we watch... The 66 show. We're like, right. how many egg puns are there? How many cat puns mm -hmm. are there? Yeah. So, like, Mr. F like Arnold is so over the top that I'm just like, oh, my God. You know who I actually really wanted to play Mr. Freeze in a movie? Is uh, Ben Stein. Yeah. Like the, the yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been great. Just because he's so monotone. Yeah. I think it would have been great. 
which comes more from the animated series. Again, when we watch that, he's very monotone in that series. Mm -hmm. Um, before I segue into my next spiel, do you have any closing thoughts for this movie? Okay. Um, my thoughts on Arnold playing Mr. Freeze towards the end when he found out that his wife was still alive. Mm -hmm. And then he gave the medicine to help. Take two and call me in the morning. <laughs> yeah, to help Arthur. My heart start, you know, opened mm. up a little bit more for him. But at the beginning, yeah, I didn't care for him as Mr. Freeze. But, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And you got to remember, this is this is 97. So mm -hmm. this is this is like his heyday. Uh -huh. He had done Predator. He had done like Total Recall, Kindergarten Cop, Twins, all that stuff. He'd been mm -hmm. all over the spectrum. Yeah. And I think this was, I could be wrong. I could, don't quote me. I think this was his, one of his last movies before he became governor. I think so. I think this was right towards the end. So, um. Okay, anything else? Nope. How'd you feel about Poison Ivy? Because you've seen Mr. Freeze. Mm -hmm. Like, as this, I think this should be your first introduction to Poison Ivy. Yeah, she was okay. Good? Okay. Yeah, she was okay. All right. Uh, we'll see more of her a lot. more. Um, and we'll see more of Bane. Okay, so all of that being said, uh, when this movie came out, again, this was the 90s. A lot of movies in the 90s, when they were made, were made to sell toys. Literally, that's it. If you didn't sell toys, you didn't make the movie. So, that being said, they had already planned on making more of these movies. Mm -hmm. And they had planned on two more movies. One, Chris O'Donnell was supposed to get his own movie. He was going to leave Batman and become Nightwing. And then, they were actually going to make a fifth movie. And it was either going to be called Batman Unchained or Batman Triumph. Depending on the script you read, it goes back and forth. And the main villains were going to be Scarecrow and Harley Quinn. And what was interesting about this is Scarecrow was going to use his fear toxin, which kind of makes people hallucinate. Mm -hmm. And when he used his... It was actually supposed to have George Clooney return. The reason Val Kilmer didn't return is Val Kilmer and Joel Schumacher, the director, didn't get along. So that's why George Clooney got hired. But anyways, um, Scarecrow was going to use his fear toxin and like Harley Quinn, just saying that, I can't even say this out loud. So they were once again going to completely redo the origin story. Harley Quinn was going to ingest the fear toxin and it turns out that Harley Quinn was going to be the daughter of the Joker. She's supposed to be the lover of the Joker. But in the movie, she was going to be the daughter of the Joker. And that being said, when she ingests some of the fear toxin, she was going to have hallucinations. And supposedly Jack Nicholson was going to come back and play the Joker again as mm -hmm. her father, as like a dream sequence. Uh -huh. That could have been really interesting. <laughs> a completely bastardized version of the character that... I have trouble accepting, but still, it could have been really, really interesting. And that's one of the things for me, we have a lot of Batman to watch, a lot uh -huh. of different shows, a lot of different interpretations, and that's the thing. Sometimes you watch something and you're like, that's that's not how this origin story goes. DC has what's called Elseworlds, and it's basically like, in a parallel dimension, this happened. And that's where you got to kind of put your mind sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like in this universe, this exists. In this universe, this exists. So, I mean, obviously, like the Adam West is its own little creation. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the this universe, in this movie universe, it's like this. We'll get to the animated series. We'll get to like the, the, the Christopher Nolan movies with like the Dark Knight and stuff. They're all going to be different. Yeah. Some of them are easier to accept than others. Right. This one's a little hard for me to accept. <laughs> um, but we have we are done with the four movies. We're we're done. Uh, we are now going to go back and do the animated series. Okay. Um, any closing thoughts? I'm not going to ask who you want to see in the animated series because everybody, everybody's 
ever made is in the animated series. <laughs> um, so for these four movies, Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, closing thoughts, what you think? Worth watching? They were worth watching, yes. Okay. I enjoyed them. You enjoy, okay. Some good. of them more than those, but yeah, they were good. Okay. Um, that's it? That's it. That's it? Okay. Yeah. For those who have seen this movie, Batman and Robin, um, what'd you think? <laughs> <laughs> Uma Thurman. I loved Uma Thurman. She, and evidently in interviews, she's like, I had a great time. Like, I, I didn't care. Which at this point, I think all she had done was like Pulp Fiction. And some other stuff, but like that was her big, big one. It was um. So, what'd you think of Batman for Batman and Robin? What'd you think of Uma? What'd you think of Arnold, George Clooney, Alicia Silverstone, everybody under the sun? Go ahead, let us know. Otherwise, we are now going to go back to the animated series, and we will see you guys next time.